Hi all, we're going to look today at Kasparov versus Short in round 8 of the Norris 1992 tournament. Kasparov playing white played a very novel um, opening against Short after e4, e5 and the standard knight f3, knight c6. Instead of playing bishop b5, which had been the royal Lopez, or bishop c4 with a view of playing, say, the Evans Gambit, which is another surprise weapon Kasparov's used, he instead plays d4, and this is called the Scotch game. Um, after e takes d4, knight takes d4, short played bishop c5, and one of the main line moves here is knight takes c6 here, where black would play queen f6. Kasparov actually plays bishop e3 here, which has different points to it. It's immediately threatening um, knight takes c6, and then bishop takes c5, so black has to do something about that. Short played queen f6 here, and now Kasparov defended that knight, on d4 by playing c3. So c3 seems a bit of a passive move because it's blocking in this knight here on that square, which could usefully go to that square usually. After knight g7, now Smart plays bishop c4. I think one of the points of this is to discourage black from playing d5, which would increase the scope of black's pieces. So short plays just castles and Kasparov castles, and now bishop b6. And now we see here the knight retreating to c2. So Kasparov encouraging black to say play taking on e3, because if the knight takes e3, that knight will be good on e3, eyeing the d5 and f5 squares. Instead, short just plays d6. So in this position now, Kasparov doubles short's pawns and now plays f4. Which seems a little bit loose thing, because white hasn't got the dark squared bishop and is weakening some squares to do this f4. But on the other hand, it is gaining some space on the king's side. Short reacts very, very aggressively. Short, by the way, is, is had a Fido rating of 2685 at the time of this game. And was one of the highest rated uh, Western players. Um, he played g5, so it undermines this e5 square to get a very nice knight to e5. But unfortunately, as a side effect, black is weakening his king position, which actually spells disaster later on, as we'll see. Kasparov concedes that e5 square, but as they say, no pain, um, no gain. So in giving up the e5 square, white has this binds now with this f5 pawn. He retreats his bishop back, and at the moment, it's difficult for black to break out with d5. I think Kasparov could simply just take... This pawn will be immune because of this queen's unfortunate position on f6 at the moment. So short's content just to play bishop d7. And now Kasparov further binds that d5 possibility by playing c4. But also now he's given his knight a good square on to go to c3. So, so far this seems a very interesting opening uh, to play. Um, if any club players are watching this, you know, why isn't this opening more popular? You know, we'll see now that Black was totally overambitious on the king side by playing g4. So he's weakening his king side even more. Uh, maybe he's got this idea that he's going to use the g fold later, say king h8, rook g8. But it didn't happen in the game. Because Brav played knight c3. And Short now continues with h5, just supporting g4. Fine. But off the queen d2. You know, white's building up pressure on these dark squares, and the queen, after king h8, although short might be preparing, say, rook g8 and, and maybe doubling rooks or something, something very aggressive on the king side, Kasparov wasn't at all concerned, it seems. He just plays queen f4. And now, short played bishop c6. So maybe he's, he's trying to put pressure on this diagonal and the g2 square. And if he can like get his rook here, it'll be like coordinate pressure. Maybe knight f3 later would be on the cards. Um, but Kasparov simply played knight e3 now. And I think here Short made a terrible um, blunder, allowing a, a, a sacrifice ripping open his king. He played knight d7. And can you see the move which Kasparov played here? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Kasparov played bishop takes g4. And it's typical of many Kasparov sacrifices that, you know, he's even giving his opponent a free check. Um, like in this position, after the bishop sack for two pawns, you know, he would have had to have calculated things like queen d4 check. Let's have a quick look. If Short had played queen d4 check here, 
King H1. Black's really in trouble still. So although a lot of material up at the moment, you know, white's threatening things like rook f3 to h3 or f6 and queen h6. So it seems a very menacing position for the black king. Here's an example, knight g8 f6. Now if knight takes to try and sacrifice material back, just rook d1, according to Ribka, is a very accurate move. And black's in real trouble here because of that knight on f6. The queen moves, knight takes f6. So... This queen d4 check was allowed, but it wasn't played. It was actually queen h4 that was played. So short's trying to use this pin and, and get rook g8 in. Now here, um, another move which Kasparov plays. So he's giving up more material with another quiet but killer move coming up. So he plays rook f3 with the idea of rook h3. But he must have factored in short's reply, which is very, very tactical. Short played knight g6, offering the knight in order to use this f file to attack Black's the white queen. Kasparov just seems must have factored this in. He sacrificed the whole knight now. He just played queen e3, believe it or not, which Ribka really likes. So Short's now is still threatened with this menacing rook h3, so he hasn't got too many options. So he takes the knight on g4, and now Kasparov plays queen h6 check. And, you know, Kasparov is two pieces down here. The material situation, five, seven pawns against four, five pawns. He's two pawns up, but he's two minor pieces down. But this is a crushing attack, because after king g8, rook h3, there's a lot of menacing threats now. How do you defend this as black? If black short, say, play rook f8, then f takes g, fg, and now check, and now rook f1 check. And these rooks are blasting. Uh, down these files, and there's no defense. Black would be forced to play something like queen f5. And after this sequence, rook g, g3, just threatening rook g8, mate. It would, be, it would just be mating. So th this is really, really tricky for black. So that king position, even though two minor pieces up, short here actually played queen takes h3. And after g takes h3, it's not so simple still. But Kasparov plays very, very accurately. He plays f6 here, so he's threatening mating one with queen g7. So short sacks back. And, you know, he's got some material for the queen. It's not all over just yet. Rook a8, and now king h1, again with menacing threat now of rook g1 check. So the attack continues with just rook and queen still. And after knight g6, now Kasparov starts throwing in the kitchen sink. Basically, the kitchen sink being these two pawns. You'll see now he uses his h pawn. The one on h3. After rook e6, queen g5. So the threat now is h5. So the short's continually under pressure in this game. After rook f8, h5. Rook e5, now queen h6. So the knight can't really move because of this rook g1 check. So short plays rook takes e4. So he's trying to fight back against white's king to, to sort of do something with his three pieces here. Three or four pieces. After knight takes, rook takes, there is now a threat of rook e1, double check and mate. So Kasparov cautiously plays king g1. And after knight e5, now these three pieces seem to be working well together. You know, black might be threatening things like knight f3 check, rook g4 check. So it's not all over, but Kasparov plays queen g5 check. And after king h7, queen f5. And after king h6 now, rook f3, so he's squashing black's counterplay a bit. Rook e2 was played, the menacing threat of rook g2 check. But Kasparov, he's accurate, he plays queen f6 check. After king h7, queen g5. So he doesn't mind if black played rook g2, he'd just snap that off and just he'd be the exchange up still, winning that endgame. So short plays bishop e4, and now h6. So these pawns are fantastic for, for attacking. So the threat now is again queen g7, mate. So bishop g6. And now more of the kitchen sink is thrown at short with h4. So now rook e4, threatening rook g4 check, winning the queen. Kasparov factors this in. He just plays h5. So it's lovely how, you know, Kasparov just factors in all black's um, counterattacks. He gives up his queen to go into this endgame now, the exchange up. And this endgame is fairly hopeless for black. After B3, short resigned.